going on. Okay. Hello again. My name is Ted Meyerson. I'm a volunteer with AARP Maryland. I want to welcome you to the second of seven Fraud Watch Friday programs that are being presented on the first and third Friday through May. The programs are free and open to everyone, but you do need to register. However, one registration is good for the entire series. If you know anyone whom you'd like to invite to join us, they can search Fraud Watch Fridays forward slash Maryland and find a link where they can register. I would like to have some Bob Bush, who is uh, teaming up with me to put these on, introduce himself. Bob? Hello, everybody. I'm Bob Bush. I live in Tampa Bay, Florida, area of Tampa Bay. And uh, welcome to you all. We're, we're happy to be here. Ted and I are collaborating on this uh, Fraud Watch. And we'd like to get something possibly going down in Florida or, or, or expand our audience a little bit. And I'm an AARP volunteer, and I'm here to support Ted today. And I'm next session I present. So welcome to everybody. And I uh, hope you enjoy and learn something from uh, this presentation Ted has. All right. Now, I'll try to get to questions in the chat. And we will have time at the end for people to ask questions. So now let's get started. Let's start with some definitions. Identity theft is a crime in which a thief obtains personal information that enables someone to impersonate somebody else. Now, it's so special and so pervasive that I wanted to list medical identity theft separately. That's where somebody enables somebody to impersonate someone else in order to get drugs or health care. And we all know what a fraud or a scam is. It's a wrongful or criminal deception intended to result in financial or personal gain for the perpetrator. Now, it's a serious problem. Identity theft is a serious problem. There were 4.7 million reports uh, in 2020 of people trying to do something illegal. And the number one of all of them was identity theft. Just think about it. Out of 4.7 million reports, identity theft was top. Now, it is true, and you will hear people tell you, that younger people get picked on more than older people. But it is also true that younger people suffer 25% of what older people suffer financially. You can see on this chart where uh, younger people, 20 to 29, may get hit for $324 on average, but older adults, 80 plus, average closer to $1,300. That's a big difference. So how do they get your identity? Well, a thief uses available information and there's a lot of information out there. Some of it you can partially control and others you can't. Let's look at what you can control. You can control how your social security gets, number gets put around, you can at, at least to a degree. Your driver's license the same way, your passport number if you have a passport, your financial account numbers, your bank account numbers, your PIN numbers, your credit card expiration date security code, what you put on social media. And social media is a big perpetrator of spreading information about you. But these are in the public domain, and you don't have any say about it. Your legal name, your current and past address, your place of birth, your email address, your phone number, your affiliations, memberships, employer, life cycle announcements, and your credit report. That's all out there for somebody to access. 
So there are other ways too. Cyber breaches. We all know about, we all hear about people being hacked. And, you know, when I do this in person, I ask people to hold up their hands if they think they've been hacked. And usually about a third of the people hold up their hands. And then I say, all right, everybody hold up your hand. And you'll see why in a minute. Out and out stealing. You give your credit card to the waiter or waitress, they disappear. Who knows what they do with the number? Somebody can steal your tax returns out of the mailbox or documents out of the, out of the dumpster, your medical records. Just steal stuff out of your mailbox. Skimming. There are devices that people put on gas pumps and ATM machines. You put in your credit card, it reads it, and the thief, the criminal, gets that information. Phishing and smishing. What is phishing? Phishing is an, is an email you get that is designed to look like it's coming from a legitimate company. Smishing is the same thing with a text message. And then there are live calls and robocalls and vishing. Well, what is vishing? Vishing is phishing on the telephone where you get a call and it sounds like it's coming from a legitimate company and it is not. And people will say, uh, we need to check on something. What is your credit card number? So I asked you if you thought you had been hacked. Well, just look at this. There's been over 2 trillion records stolen and there are 200 accounts hacked every second. And that adds up to a lot of people. Look at Yahoo, and that's not even new. It's 3 billion people. Equifax, 143 million. Home Depot, 56 million. If you add that all up, it's more than the number of people alive in the world. So believe me, your information is out there. You've been hacked one way or another. And there are more ways. There are bogus applications. Phony job offers contain information in the application that somebody can learn a lot about you, everything about you. Free offers, come get a dinner, there's free services, and you're asked to fill out a form. And then there's a problem. You get a call. Uh, I'm, in the last three weeks, I've gotten six times. This is Amazon calling. Somebody is buying a cell phone for $750 with your account. Uh, call now or it will be charged to your account tomorrow morning. That never happens. It's not real, but those kind of calls are out there. There are new ploys every day. IRS, you owe taxes and you will be arrested. SEC, you're involved with stock investment fraud. Or this is Microsoft. Your programs are going to stop working if you don't call this number. Fake bills. The invoice for the item you ordered is attached. Well, that's curious. What did I order? And you click on it and somebody gains access to your, com your computer or you need to put in some kind of information which they can use against you. We owe you. You overpaid, call this number for a refund. We've been hacked and need to return your money. Fake charities, people lost everything in the hurricane or some disaster like Texas. And everybody wants to help. And so you donate money to a fake charity and the charity is the person calling you for the money. I've got a deal for you. Only a thousand coins like this were ever minted. COVID-19 cures and prevention are sprouting up every day and they're not real. Tax preparation, we guarantee a refund. Social security, I'm sh I would be surprised if half of you have not gotten a social security call saying your account has been compromised, payments will stop. You know what, by accident, by accident, I pushed the wrong button and got somebody on the line with a social security call. You know what the first thing they asked me? The first thing they asked, please give me your social security number. <laughs> if they know that my payment's going to be stopped, wouldn't you think they would have that number? What do they do with the information? Well, they convince somebody that they are you. 
or they can actually create a Frankenstein, a fictitious identity by aggregating information from several sources. And, 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 and they can take your social security number and, your, and somebody else's address and somebody else's birthday, put it all together, sounds like a whole different person. Well, how will that bother me if they do that? Well, if it's my social security on, number on there, uh, it could come back to haunt me because that's what's going to be a key thing or an address or whatever is going to link to me. And so I want to be careful because these people who do these things can apply for a credit card, open a bank account, write bad checks, lease an apartment, buy a car, get medical treatments on your insurance, file for a tax refund, happens all the time, open utility accounts, and you know what? Get blamed for traffic violations. I didn't believe this until I spoke to a, a bunch of, uh, of, of uh, policemen, and I said, does that really happen? They said, yeah, we stop somebody, and they give us a fake uh, card, uh, and, 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 and it's not them. So whoever they're mimicking gets a traffic ticket or is called to court. And got, I wasn't even there. Who, I, I don't know anything about it, but that is being done, believe it or not. Now, you're not the bad guy. The thief is the bad guy. It can happen to anybody. Bernie Madoff stole $15.2 million from Ellie Wiesel, a Nobel Prize winner. Somebody can file a tax return in your name and you get a refund and you don't even know it. Social security checks can be stolen from your mailbox. You had nothing to do with that. You're not the bad guy. The guy that did it is the bad guy. So the thing there are lots of things you can do to protect yourself these are only a few in future presentations we'll talk about more things you can do but keep your social security number and personal information private as best as you can i know when i go to the community college and try to sign up for a course i got to give them my social security number I don't want to, but I got to. So best I can, I keep it private. Use credit cards instead of debit cards. Sorry about that. I thought that I had cut everything off. And that's a spam call like we're talking about. And I know it because I keep getting it from the same number. Use credit cards instead of debit cards. Credit cards have a limited liability. Debit cards can run out of that limited liability and people can empty your bank account. Limit the number of credit cards you carry. Keep copies of the front and back of everything in your wallet. Put it on your copy machine, turn everything over, copy it again, so that if you were to lose your wallet or if somebody were to steal your credit card, you know what was in your wallet. You know the, the, what credit card it was, the number of the credit card, who to call, and, uh, and handle it that way. Don't leave mail or personal information unsecured. If you know what time the mailman comes, go soon after and get your mail. Uh, if you live in a condominium and you have a locked mailbox, that's great. But other than that, just try not to leave stuff in the, mail, in the mailbox too long. Establish online access to your accounts. You know, if you have a bank account and you get a statement once a month and the statement is dated the first of the month and somebody were to steal something out of your account on the second of the month, you'd wait a whole month to find out. But if you have online access, you can check it 15 times a day. And so you can stay current with what's, with what's going on in your bank account and be assured that nothing untoward is happening. Use two-step authentication. What is that? Well, when you use a password to get into an, an, an organization, a bank or whatever, they will send 
a six digit number to your cell phone. And you then put that six digit number in so that if someone has stolen your password, they still can't get into your account because they need that six digit number and they don't have your cell phone. Shred everything. Shredders are not, they cost money, but they're not terribly expensive. And the insurance you get that nobody can steal something from you from that, from what you're shredding is worth the investment. Get a, a, a micro shredder and you end up with confetti so small, nobody can do anything with it and shred everything. Check and monitor your credit report. You're entitled to a free credit report uh, from once a year. There are three major credit reporting companies. Get one every four months and you'll keep current with what's going on with your credit. Don't be a smarty pants. I wanted to put it, this in there because it has caused people problems. Don't engage with a scammer. If you get a phone call or even a a text message or, or email. Don't have a conversation to waste their time. I always have people tell me, you know, these people are making hundreds of calls a day, and if I waste their time, I'm hurting them. And don't threaten them because I've also heard reports about retribution where they'll file false claims against you and they'll put stuff on social media which you can never get off and they can be very embarrassing. Just hang up. Call the FCC, call the National Elder Fraud Hotline, or call the AARP Fraud Watch Network. And I'm going to tell you how to do that. The Federal Communications Commission can be reached at 888 225 5322. And then the National Help, National Elder Fraud Line hotline uh, is wonderful. And what you can expect is somebody will respond quickly. You will be assigned to a case manager and you'll always be treated with a respect and understanding. And you can reach them at 833-372-8327. And of course, there's the AARP Fraud Watch Network, which whose phone number is 877-908-3360. Or you can just go aarp.org forward slash Fraud Watch Network. You don't have to be an AARP member. You can get tips on how to avoid cons, scams, and identity theft. You can get warnings about new scams. You can file a report and you can get help from on their helpline. And you can sign up for a free bi-weekly email, Watchdog Alerts newsletter. So that's what we're going to talk about today. I'll leave this up for just a minute or two so you can uh, see what's coming next. And you can see recordings by going to Facebook or YouTube and search AARP Maryland and see recordings of this presentation and future past presentations and future presentations. So with that, um, do we have any questions in the chat? No, we do not other than the first one about the, we'll say it again, the uh, same ID invitation is good for all of these sessions. Uh, does anybody have a question? 